Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining in the, in the hackathon. And, um, you know, I'm super excited to see what everyone builds and what we're able to achieve uh, out of this hackathon. I think one of the one of the amazing things is how far certain hackathon projects have gone, um, and those hackathon projects that have done well in past hackathons have actually gone on to be accepted to incubators and actually gone on to raise uh, millions of dollars from top firms. So what what I've seen from these hackathons is people that really put their best foot forward are able to generate something truly unique and nuanced, and you know after another couple of iterations of that, they go to an incubator or they actually raise money and make a real working project. And that's a big part of our goal is to enable the future of decentralized uh, systems, decentralized consensus and truth-based uh, truth based society. So I, I think it's useful for us to just briefly talk about what are we all doing in this industry and why are we working on this and what are we seeking to achieve? In, in my mind, I think we are creating a society powered by truth rather than a society trust uh, powered by weak trust assumptions and weak trust promises. And throughout history, there has actually been a lot of friction and a lot of problems and a lot of societal failure and a lot of lost opportunity based on the fact that people have traditionally only been able to interface through trust, uh, to trust us promises. And the unique opportunity that's afforded, that's been afforded to us over the past decade with the appearance of Bitcoin and other decentralized systems is actually the ability to create a truth-based society. And then there's two, two versions of that truth. There's cryptographic truth, and then there's definitive truth. Cryptographic truth is truth that's guaranteed with private keys and encryption and guaranteed to, to be correct and deterministically firm in its, in, its, in its correctness. And then definitive truth is actually what we at Chainlink work on and what we hope to provide you as the developer community to then build the applications that create a society powered by truth rather than a society powered by weak trust assumptions. And, and this is actually the big idea that we need to uh, bring into the world, right? So really in, in, my, in, in my study of, of economic history and my study of technical uh, you know, protocols and their evolution um, over the last 50, 60 years, I see that the old way of doing things is actually the thing that's stopping progress. And so the real question is, how much better is the new way of doing things? And what are the external economic factors that drive people to adopt, you know, cars instead of horses or electricity instead of oil lamps or smart contracts instead of centralized systems? And I think this deeper understanding is actually very important for, for both people building these things and eventually for really everyone in society, which is where I think things will get to. Generally speaking, I think the way that society works now is there are institutions and brands that interpret and process real world outcomes and events into contractual agreements that are either digital or paper or, or whatever combination of the two. But this results in what we call just trust us paper promises. And these just trust us paper promises have a tendency to fail. And there's a long, long string in history of this you know, Enron in the auditing world, Robinhood in the trading world, Wirecard in the payments world, Evergrande most recently in the real estate world. And fundamentally, it's because there's nothing fun foundationally guaranteeing those systems. There's only an assumption that a group of people somewhere will, will behave in a certain way. And the reality is that they don't behave that way because they're not cryptographically forced to, to act according to a protocol or according to a set of deterministic conditions that are enforced uh, by, by a cryptographically guaranteed system like a blockchain and an Oracle network and private keys. And what you really have uh, appearing now in the last few years is what, what I call the, the truth machine. And the truth machine is Oracle networks that are combined with blockchains and that are controlled by private keys. So those are really the three pillars of what's changed in the world. You have Oracle networks generating deterministic, cryptographically guaranteed truth. You have blockchains storing that, giving people access to that, allowing that to affect contractual outcomes, um, such as in smart contracts and in networks like Ethereum. And then you have private keys, giving people direct and complete control over, over the agreement and you know whether they want to be in it or not in it on a second by second basis. And this transition to cryptographic truth and to definitive truth through the truth machine and Oracle networks and this combination of private keys and Oracle networks and smart contracts, that is the tool set. That is the kind of the triangle of tools 
that is going to completely reinvent society, once again, from a society that's based on promises and based on weak trust assumptions into a society that's based on truth guarantees. And I fully believe that right now we, we are in an early stage where people are implementing the first protocols, the first applications, kind of like the first email clients or the first websites. And eventually the enterprises will, will begin to compete with each other. And they're already starting to do that by adopting blockchains. But, but more importantly, I think people in society will come to demand cryptographic truth the, the, the same way they need people to do emailing with them or the same way that people need to have a cell phone. And, and basically there will be a requirement that the average person has for cryptographic truth to guarantee their relationship with peers through a platform or with the platform or institution itself, right? So basically, we're going to go from a world where people say one thing and do another. You know, Robin Hood says one thing, does another. Evergrande says one thing, does another. Enron says one thing, does another. And we're going to transition to a world where that's not possible anymore. And once enough of the world transitions to a state of cryptographic guarantees and cryptographic truth, the rest of the world won't have a choice because all the users, all the people consuming all these services and systems and financial products and insurance and ad networks and games, they, they will force the rest of the world to, to convert because they will demand cryptographic guarantees. And what we're doing in our industry and what you're doing at this hackathon and what we're all doing kind of together, in my opinion, is slowly piece by piece, line of code by line of code, bringing the world to this idea of cryptographic truth through use cases, through infrastructure, through various research innovations, this is what we are all doing in, in, in our own way. And, and it's something that I feel very lucky to be a proud of because these types of monumental shifts in how society works, they happen, you know, every couple of centuries or every century, something like that. You know, the, 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 the internet was really the last closest thing to this. And, um, and even, even, even you could say that this cryptographic truth is going to be the final state of the internet. This is Web3 is what the internet will be for the next 50 years after it started 50 years ago, right? So I, I think this is actually the end state of the internet. This is the, the thing the internet will do in its final form. It'll provide cryptographically guaranteed outcomes and truth. Our goal is to build a society and a world powered by truth. We do this because we fundamentally believe that, you know, truth as a foundation for how society and peer-to-peer -peer agreement and institutional level agreement, that is the foundation on which society and relationships and institutional guarantees and peer-to-peer -peer relationships should be built, not weak trust assumptions. And we are doing this by building decentralized systems that link everything in the world to truth, which we believe creates a fair and biased world but which you as the developers are actually instantiating into reality. So we are providing you the infrastructure. We are providing you the architecture to build more useful, more applicable smart contracts, right? So we have been able to build an infrastructure called Oracle Networks that takes smart contracts out of the world of only tokenization, only private keys, only voting mechanisms, right? That, that is the world of smart contracts up until Oracle Networks. And that's important. That's an important step in the evolution of, of our industry. It's gotten a lot of value in the industry. It's created DAOs. It's done a lot of amazing things. But the next step that's already well underway and that I think many of you are, are interested in, which is why you're here and you, and you should be interested because it's a monumental shift in, 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 in what smart contracts do. It's the ability to build what we call hybrid smart contracts that can interface with real world data, that can use different contracts on different chains, and that can do more advanced things, things to trust minimized off-chain compute via, via, via systems like uh, chain link keepers and Oracle networks that do um, trust minimized off-chain compute. Generally speaking, um, this is the missing piece of the puzzle to unlock a huge amount of use cases. And so I don't really think that I've ever seen in my experience building technology as much opportunity to build new use cases and as much demand and capital and interest in trust-minimized, truth-based, cryptographically truth-based use cases, whether that's in gaming, whether that's in art, whether that's in the financial system, whether that's in insurance, whether that's in ad networks, all of these separate huge hundreds of billions of dollars markets have a deep need for cryptographically truth-guaranteed systems. And for the first time in the last few years, we've been able to make infrastructure available that allows people to build that. 
And so that is really the opportunity of this hackathon. And in my opinion, the opportunity in, in our industry. We at this hackathon, you know, we have two tracks, one for people who are just starting, one for people who are more advanced. We have a huge amount of sponsors. We have a huge amount of resources. We, had a, we have a lot of different services that provide various data, the ability to prove uh, the state of an asset, the ability to get verifiable randomness, the ability to do new types of computations that you couldn't traditionally do in a blockchain in a trust minimized way. And we, we allow you to, to do this across many different chains and, and with many different data sets. So once again, for the first time in this industry, you can make the permutations that really weren't possible a year ago. You, you couldn't build a combination of a random number a generator, three, four, five really high value data sources, uh, keepers implementation to start and stop the contract all into one expansive hybrid smart contract, right? And so the definition of a hybrid smart contract has really expanded. It has expanded beyond, hey, there's just some code on a chain over here. Oh, there's two contracts, one for the tokens, one for the multi-sig, maybe a third one for, for, for voting. The scope of what a smart contract is has just expanded in the last couple of months, year, something like that with the appearance of Oracle networks. And so the implementations that people can make the amount of different new ideas that people can implement in gaming, you know, DeFi, insurance, ad networks, any number of use cases, it's, it's basically just an open opportunity in all of these environments, which is, um, I have to tell you, I've never seen this much opportunity in, in, in our industry. Generally speaking, you know, some examples are things like proof of reserves. So you can act, you can get an Oracle network to verify the state of different um, of different assets and to prove the state of that asset. That'll solve things like Enron. It'll solve things like Wirecard. Instead of waiting for an annual audit, you audit something every single block. You prove on a on a 10 second basis what is the state of an asset using cryptographic guarantees adding identity to various contracts. Um, you know, we have multiple identity data sources. There's various ways to use Oracle networks to add identity. The ability to do trust minimized off-chain compute that was previously not possible. Um, and, and generally speaking, you, 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 you were limited in what you could build on-chain uh, until keepers and keeper networks really appeared. For example, you couldn't even really start a contract or stop a contract just with the contract itself, right? You would need a keeper network to tell the contract to start at a specific time and to stop at a specific time. But now with the level of automation we've provided, you can, you can build more automated, more advanced smart contracts that consume various data, gen, use various randomness uh, sources um, you know, for verifiable randomness and basically build, build the contract of, of the future today. That, that's basically what I'm telling you is the contracts that people uh, didn't think were possible yesterday are now possible today. And, and, and that's, the big, that's the big difference. In fact, with Keepers, you can actually do a really interesting thing where you can broadcast a really big contract and you can designate a portion that goes into the Keeper network and you can designate a portion that runs on chain. And you can actually, in a scalable way, do a lot of different things with, uh, with, with smart contract code in a Keeper, an Oracle network, that you know, an on-chain contract might've been too expensive or, or not or not able to do. We already see this happening, right? So you, you, you folks here at this hackathon, many of you probably already work in DeFi. I'm sure some of you work on DeFi protocols. I, I'm guessing a lot of you are here to get um, you know, involved in DeFi, understand how it works, understand how to build NFTs, dynamic NFTs, advanced decentralized insurance. I, I really think you folks are very early and it's very, very good to be early in an industry like this because you will learn the things that you need to learn to, to, to be in the right position when even more of this takes off. So, so if you're here to learn DeFi, if you're here to learn how to build NFTs, if you're here to learn how to build these advanced things, I, I think you're basically doing this at, at the perfect time, right? Everybody's interested in it. There's huge demand for, from, from society for, for cryptographic truth. And the, there's still um, a certain lack of full understanding about how to build these things. So if you can build cryptographically guaranteed systems, you can achieve the things that people in the traditional web world have been trying to achieve for decades, but haven't been able to achieve because they didn't have the right infrastructure. But you do. And, and that's the big advantage that you have, that if you put the right amount of effort forward, you can, um, you can really turn into something truly unique. Generally speaking, from here, I think the entire world basically becomes one big global marketplace 
of smart contracts and chains all interoperating with each other on all the world's important topics. And, and, and what we're going to really arrive at is you'll be able to build smart contracts that are composition of derivatives on a certain chain, carbon credits on another chain, insurance agreements on a third chain, some kind of capital markets activity with data from, from various Oracle networks and, and payment systems executing payments for you in various ways to various users. And, and it's really this expansion that the people working on things now are going to be able to take the fullest advantage of because it's like any technological shift. If you know how to implement the technology of a technological shift just before it happens, the ability to then implement that when the shift happens is extremely, extremely important and valuable. Not only to, to, to helping achieve those goals, but even just to, to being able to achieve what you want to achieve in your career or in how you'd like to impact the world. So my strong belief is that the entire world is going to cryptographic truth and the entire world's markets and systems and ad networks and games will all be in one big um, set of you know, multiverse uh, systems and, 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 and it'll just be interconnected at the cryptographic truth level. And, and this is why Web3 is actually the end state of the internet and the whole internet will eventually move to Web3. Generally speaking, the numbers are, are very much in our favor. So not, not, not only is this already highly attractive because there's over 100 billion in DeFi, but as a percentage, it's still very, very small. So there's still a huge amount of value that can flow into DeFi. Beyond that, you, you actually have um, the rest of the world's markets, right? And if you just look at the size of DeFi and cryptocurrencies relative to the other markets that DeFi covers, that real estate covers, that you know insurance covers, that global ad networks cover, we're, we're really just at the very, very, very beginning. And, and once again, what I sincerely think will happen is the entire world will transition to a cryptographic truth-based system. And it is this transition to a cryptographic truth-based system that, um, that you here at this hackathon are, are both moving forward and being prepared to take part in because you can build truly advanced hybrid smart contracts as a result of going through this hackathon. And that's an ability only a few thousand people really have today and based on the amount of hybrid smart contracts that are going to need to exist, the ability to instantiate cryptographic truth into all of these uh, systems and all over the world, really, is, I think, going to be a way to make a real contribution to how society works. So if you find this interesting, um, I'm thrilled that you're at this hackathon. I'm thrilled that you're building this. If you want to work on the infrastructure itself, then we, we, we welcome you to find a way to work with us on helping build this core infrastructure that enables all of this. And beyond that, you know, I wish you the best of luck. And I, I, I'm super excited to see what comes out of the hackathon this year. And once again, I have seen a lot of hackathon projects go on to get significant resources, significant investment, and, and actually become real things that do actually move our, war, our, our, our industry and society towards a cryptographically truth guaranteed world. So I'm really grateful that you are willing to spend about a month working on all this. And I think that at the end of the day, it's not only very interesting about what can be built, but many of the things that people build or even some of the initial creative ideas that people have at these types of things uh, eventually go on to inform other ideas and eventually go on to have a life of, uh, of their own. So thank you very much for um, you know, being part of the hackathon and putting forward the time and effort to, to really try make, making something new and creative and finding a way for cryptographic truth to, to make its way into the world in, in a unique and useful way. I, I think it's a really worthwhile endeavor and I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for all the people that are working with us as sponsors. And I'm also very grateful for our community and their support. And uh, I'm extremely grateful for you uh, taking the time to build all of this as well. So thank you.